Hi folks, welcome to another episode of My Life with Robert Burns. Jim Thompson, Douglas McKenzie here again to talk to another of our cronies from around the Burns world. Hi Jim, how are you doing? Doing fantastic Douglas, hi everybody. Good, good, good. Uh, today cronies, uh, our guest is the Grand Master Mason for Scotland. Cronies everywhere, please welcome Ramsey McGee. Hi Ramsey, how are you doing? Good morning. It's lovely to be with you and thank you very much for your very kind invitation. And you've had a long journey this morning, all the way from uh, Fortrose, all the way down to Edinburgh. Yeah, from the Black Isle down to Edinburgh. Um, it's over the last four years I've been doing it regularly, so you just uh, go on with it. It's, it's good when you're in the train because you can get some work done. It's when you're driving up and down that, well, it's difficult to do work when you're driving. Uh -huh. The last last time I was up there, we were uh, uh, we're just off for trolls, watching dolphins. Oh yeah, playing yeah. about in the in the fourth there, so it was uh, very pleasant. Yeah, Fortress is the kind of dolphin centre of the world at the moment. Um, that said, uh, <laughs> I've lived in the village since 1974, and I don't know when I was last down to see a dolphin. Um, but that that's just the way of it. Uh, if it's on your doorstep, you just ignore it. Uh, <laughs> you kind of get, get near the place for camper vans. <laughs> anyway, we always start these podcasts with the same question. Ramsey, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? I certainly. Um, I, I was born in 1947 in uh, Lanarkshire in a wee village of Uddingston. Um, Quite a, there's quite an interesting wee story that I, I honestly didn't know about until I was in my mid-twenties, uh, till a, a few years after my mother had died. And uh, my aunt told me the story, and I, I then tackled my father, and he confirmed. And uh, I was totally unaware that before I was born, uh, my mother had twins, and they both died. And uh, when I was born, there was a wee bit of concern that uh, I might go the same direction. And apparently, when I was born, um, I was blue. And it was an Irish doctor, uh, uh, Dr. McElhinney, who was in attendance. And uh, he asked my father to go and get a bottle of whiskey. And my father went to the house up the stairs where my grandfather stayed. And he came back with a bottle of whiskey. And apparently... Michael Henney poured the whiskey into a basin and put me in the basin of whiskey. And I was taken in that basin from Uddingston up to Belsall Maternity. And they reckon that that's what kept me alive. So <laughs> if, if anybody's got a damn good excuse for enjoying a drama, it's me. Um, so that, that was uh, a, a wee bit of an adventurous entry into this world uh, back in 1947. But, uh, Stayed in uh, Uddingston, I, I started primary school at New Edge Primary. And then um, my grandfather, who had a grocer's business in Johnston in Renfrewshire, he took poorly and uh, my father had to give up his job as a, a, a rep. And we moved from Uddingston to Johnston and my father took over the running of the shop. And that, that's where I, uh, uh, I went to primary school. Uh, to Thorn Primary School. And then from there, I went to Johnston High. Left Johnston High um, and went straight into uh, Fairfield Shipyard as, a, as an office boy when I was 15 years of age. And uh, I spent a, a year in the ship design office, uh, which was quite an experience. Uh, the boss in there was a Mr. McDonald, and to this day, I have no idea what his first name was. Um, back then, first names of people of that rank were never, ever mentioned. He was Mr. McDonald, and that was <laughs> the end of the story. Um, I, I learned a lot in the ship design office. And then after a year, I sat another exam and ended up down in the yard as an apprentice electrician. And I was in there, I served about two and a half years of my time in there, and then I moved from there to a well-known firm in Paisley, James Kilpatrick, and I finished serving my time with them. But I had always, I had always this wish to join the police service, and uh, 
I spent another few years at the, the trade and uh, eventually uh, you could see that the writing was in the wall for many of the businesses. At that point, I was a maintenance electrician in Chrysler in Linwood and the writing was very much in the wall. So after a, a fair bit of discussion with Anne, uh, we decided that probably if we were going to do anything, then was the time to do it. So I applied uh, to join Ross and Sutherland Constabulary for the very simple reason that we spent a lot of our time up in the, the Highlands anyway. So I went through all the procedure there and uh, I was accepted and started in August 1973 as a very raw new recruit into the, the, the police service, uh, which is a very different police service to the one that we know today, unfortunately things have, uh, as far as I see it, deteriorated quite considerably. But that was me. I joined the, the, the police in 1973. Then two years later, in 75, there was a big amalgamation of police services and uh, the old Ross and Sutherland became part of the new Northern Constabulary. And uh, I stayed with Northern Constabulary for the next 30 years. Um, I retired as Chief Superintendent, uh, Head of Operations, and I uh, have absolutely no regrets about my time in the police service whatsoever. Uh, very, very uh, difficult at times, uh, very challenging at times, but very, very rewarding at times. So no regrets whatsoever about uh, being a Bobby for 30 odd years. Uh, it was quite, uh, quite an eye opener in many respects. And uh, when I left the police, um, I was still in my 50s, so I started up my own company um, doing project management and primarily licensing issues. I did a lot in the license trade. I was the area uh, manager for the License Trade Association. Uh, I did a lot of training for the, the, the license trade, and uh, that kept me fully occupied uh, for the next uh, 19 years, roughly. Uh, then at the end of 2019, um, by which time I had been appointed as the Grand Master Mason, uh, and that was taking up the, the bulk of my time, I decided that after working from age of 15 um, up into my 70s, it was time to retire. So I uh, closed the company down and concentrated on the role of Grand Master Mason. So I was installed as Grand Master Mason in November 2018. Um, we get hit then, of course, in 2020 with COVID. So the next two years were very, very difficult indeed, trying to keep things uh, going. But we've, we've managed. We're, we're through it now, uh, more or less. And uh, that's where I am at the moment uh, as Grand Master Mason. And what we're doing now in 2022, we're trying to cram three years into one year to catch up with uh, provincial and district installations, to uh, catch up with lodge centenaries, bicentenaries, tercentenaries. And uh, we've been very successful in that this year. It's been very, very busy. But by November this year, I think we will be where we should be and we'll have caught up with most of the, the, the outstanding uh, issues. Good, good. Well, that was a bit of a whistle stop tour of your, your, your life so far, so let, let, let's pick it up a wee bit. Um, uh, the, the, the time with Chrysler, was the Hillman Imps still getting produced then? Yeah, the Hillman Imps were being built in uh, Linwood uh, while I was there. Um, they, 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 were, they were something else. Uh, in fact, I had one at one point. Uh, great wee cars, um, except for the water pump. The water pump kept breaking down. But uh, apart from that, um, they, they were they were super wee cars, and we had uh, many many uh, uh, an hour's enjoyment running about in the, the hill minute. Yeah, uh, a few of my friends have the, had them. I never I never run one myself, but they they, all, they always reckoned that you needed to carry. Um, something really heavy in the in the boot at the front. Uh, to, to, <laughs> yeah, to otherwise we take the front wheels. Yeah, 
Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, sack of tatties in the front helped. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> well, this uh, builder pal of mine carried a bag of cement, and yeah. he reckoned, it's, reckoned he saved it's, his life. He did, he did a, a crash, and he reckoned it was a bag of cement that saved him. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh well, there you are. <laughs> no, they were they were they were uh, lovely. Week. When I started in there, uh, it was still the Roots Group, and apart from making cars. Um, well, they did the, the, the press, the bodies for Volvo, uh, the, they made uh, trailers for the army, they were making railway wagons, you know, there was quite a bit of diversity in the building at that time. Yeah. And eventually the, the Americans took over and, well, it didn't last too long after that, unfortunately. Yeah, that's a shame. And, uh, and, and and growing up um, and deciding to, to to join the police, you were saying that the, the police kind of became a, a different thing over the years. Um, it, it must have been strange going from um, a kind of rural uh, environment to, to a much wider uh, police environment. Did it include Aberdeen? No, no. Northern Constabulary uh, was based in Inverness. Right. And uh, we covered we covered a fair scalp of the highlands, um, but we also covered the, the three major island groups, the Western Isles, Orkney and Shetland. Um, so latterly, as head of operations, I was responsible for literally the, from Glencoe north, um, right up as far as Shetland and as far west as uh, the Western Isles. And to the east, uh, we, we uh, we linked in there with uh, Grampian Police, uh, roughly between Nairn and Forest uh, was where the, the, the border was. Um, I, I must say that I, I thought before the amalgamation, one of the, 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 the fanciest names in Scottish Police Service was uh, the old Scottish Northeastern Counties Constabulary, uh, known as SNEC. And they, they they were based in Aberdeen, so we uh, we joined up with Snack just between uh, Nairn and uh, Forest. Mm -hmm. So we had a, the the Northern Constabulary area uh, was massive. It, it was it was bigger than uh, Norway, and our northernmost station at that time was in Unst, the island of Unst. And the, it was a single man station in Unst, and the, the, the officer at the station in Unst was closer to police headquarters up in Norway than he was to police headquarters. In, <laughs> in, in, um, I, 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 I take it the TV series Shetland is, is not a, a great representation of what really happened. I wouldn't know, I've never ever watched it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And and you get involved in the licensed trade. Uh, apart from um, uh, taking on projects for them, did you did you get behind the bar at all? Oh yeah, and I'm still behind the bar. Um, I still run the the, the Seaforth Club in Fortress. Uh, that's the, the the local Masonic club. In fact, this weekend uh, we've got a private function. We've got a 50th year birthday party in the club. So it'll be a busy night on Saturday night, hopefully. And mm -hmm. the, the the tills tinkling again because again we've had uh, we've had two years of absolutely nothing. Uh, it's been very very difficult, yeah. but not just for the clubs, but for all licensed premises. Um, my heart goes out to to the the licensed trade. It's been very very difficult uh, right across the country for them, and. Uh, well, some of them are beginning to recover now. Others quite simply won't recover, yeah. uh, it's so sad. Um, but there, there, there's various things have affected, apart from COVID, um, the pubs were greatly affected prior to that, uh, between the no smoking ban, uh, Scotland having a, a higher drink driver limit than England, and probably the worst of all is the supermarkets. Uh, because the supermarkets sell alcohol at a price that pubs just cannot look at. Yeah. So if you put those three things together, uh, it's sort of sounded the death knell for a lot of pubs. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of changes happening, certainly. Yeah. 
And 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 your your Masonic career did that start from a fairly young age? Yeah, uh, it started in nineteen sixty nine, February nineteen sixty nine. Uh, I was initiated into uh, Lodge St Barkin number one five six in the village of Kilbarkin, and uh, fifty three years later, I'm still thoroughly enjoying my Freemasonry. Um, again, like the police service, I've got absolutely no regrets whatsoever. Thoroughly enjoyed my time uh, in masonry, and uh, having been appointed the Grand Master Mason was just the icing in the cake. Um, and hopefully, I've been able to to uh, live up to the expectations of the, the, the members throughout, not only throughout the country but throughout the world. Uh, because in Scottish Freemasonry, we've got Scottish lodges in over forty countries throughout the world. Uh, which is fantastic. And again, this year alone, trying to, uh, as I said, cram three years into to one year, I've been very fortunate in being able to uh, visit our lodges right throughout the Caribbean. I've been in quite a number of countries in Africa this year. I've been in Australia, Fiji. We've got one lodge in beautiful Fiji, uh, and this year they were 150 years old. So we've had Scottish Freemasonry in Fiji for over 150 years, and that that was lovely. Um, it was quite a quite a culture shock. I, I was given the traditional Fiji welcome, which was uh, absolutely unbelievable, fantastic. Um, the ladies had prepared the room uh, with mats, and each mat had a significance. Uh, there was two wee thrones, and I was sitting in one, and the district grand master was in the other. Yeah, sorry, the the master of the lodge was in the other, and the the, the other guys were in traditional costume. Uh, the ladies had made a, a garland for me, and that got ceremoniously put on. Then they went into quite a long dialogue in uh, Fijian, and uh, that resulted in, first of all, me being presented with a whale's tooth with a rope round it, which indicates unity. And that was them unifying with me. And uh, from what I can gather, that whale's tooth is, at the present moment, somewhere with DHL heading towards here. <laughs> um, and after, after that part of the ceremony, um, we were sitting around this huge wooden bowl on the floor, and the way the, the, I couldn't honestly see just exactly what was going on, but they were they were banging away at this, and then the, the, they poured water in, and they were swishing stuff around, and uh, apparently it was the, the the roots of a tree that they, they had in this big bowl. They mixed it with water, and then they swished it all over the place, and then they took a, an empty coconut shell and filled it and presented that to me. And I said to the guy next to me, I said, what do I do? He says, drink it. <laughs> so, and I, I, I drank it. Um, it, it was, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it, it, it wasn't unpleasant. It, it was fairly bland, uh, but I ended up having three cups of the stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was quite, a, it was a very traditional welcome to Fiji. And yeah. uh, I was delighted. It was absolutely unbelievable, something that I'd never, ever seen before, never mind uh, having participated in. Excellent, Ty. You've certainly done some travelling this year because, yeah. uh, you know, the, the number of times that we, 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 we tried to find a date to talk to you and you were going to be somewhere exotic. <laughs> I hadn't realised until, uh, until we were in San Antonio uh, at the Alamo several years ago just how widespread Scottish Freemasonry was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fantastic. As I say, over 40 countries, we've got Scottish lodges uh, in over 40 countries, um, which is just tremendous. Um, uh, this, well, next, uh, where are we? Uh, we're just at the end of August. At the end of September, uh, I'll be heading off to Newfoundland. Um, we've got Scottish lodges in Newfoundland, and uh, I'll be going there to install the, the new district grand master. And then at the end of October, I'm going to be in Gibraltar to install the new district grandmaster over there. And that will bring the foreign travel this year to a close. But early next year, I'll be in 
India, New Zealand, Australia, Africa. My goodness, I bet you're making a lot of people watching this really jealous of being able to travel to all these countries. Well, it's a tremendous privilege, although I've got to say, the actual travel these days is not desperately enjoyable. No. Uh, coming back from Fiji, I was, uh, was travelling for something like 32 hours uh, to get from Fiji back to uh, Edinburgh. Yep. Um, so the travel these days with all the COVID restrictions and what have you, um, it's not been the, the most enjoyable of experiences. Yeah. Um, COVID testing, uh, I don't know how many lateral flow and PCR tests I've taken this year. Uh, my nose still hasn't recovered, uh, but well, <laughs> if it's going to keep everybody safe. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, and you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Anne earlier on, as uh, she'd been able to travel all these places with you as well? No, no unfortunately. Uh, traditionally, the Grand Master Mason's wife uh, accompanies him. But to be perfectly blunt about it, the, the costs involved uh, this year uh, have been such that, you know, uh, we just cannot justify um, taking that yeah. money. Um, however, uh, she is coming over to Gibraltar with me. Uh, it would be nice. That's good. Looking forward to that. Um, but we've just got to cut our cloth these days, and that's the, the truth of the matter. Yep. We, we've blurred for a while about uh, about yourself and your, your background, but uh, we, we also want to hear about your, your interest in Burns. So we'll pass you over to Jim and get him to start a conversation on that subject with you. No, Ramsey, it's the same question that everybody gets. How do you start out with Burns? Sorry, Jim. How did you get started with Burns? Ah, well, uh, you can blame my father, I think. Uh, basically, uh, when I was 17, uh, my father was uh, involved with the Renfrew and Butte Constabulary, uh, the Johnston Subdivision Social Club. I think he was the chairman or something of the social club. Uh, and they had a, a burn supper every year, and it was it was probably one of the biggest burn suppers, certainly in Renfrewshire at that time. Uh, tickets were like hen's teeth. Uh, they were a total sellout every every year, and they were held in the old Johnson Town Hall, which uh, what really annoys me that they, 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 they knocked that building down and replaced it with a metal and plastic thing that was just a disgrace and the old town hall was absolutely beautiful beautiful building anyway that's another story uh, so when I was 17 uh, my father asked if I would like to go to a, the, the, the Burns Supper I had no idea whatsoever what it was all about um, after uh, you both sent me the, the, the invite to come to this today I, I, was, I was thinking about it and you know I honestly cannot remember Robert Burns being mentioned during my schooling. I don't think we heard about Robert Burns from any of the, the, the teachers. Um, so when my father invited me along to the Burns Supper, I thought, well, let's go for it. And uh, his cousin, my uncle Willie, was going, so I was plunked beside him. And uh, Okay, I was underage, I was at a police function, but there was still a bit of alcohol getting passed around, uh, much to my mother's great annoyance when I got home eventually in the small hours of the morning. But uh, that first burn supper, I can still remember parts of it. Um, the, the, the mortal memory was done by uh, Bob Allen, who at that time was the, the, the chief constable of Renfrew and Butte. Uh, and to be perfectly blunt, I can't remember much of what he said about Robert Burns, but to this day, I remember one of the stories that he told, and that was that the, 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 there was three guys sitting in a train, and the train was going from Glasgow up to Inverness, and of course, in those days, it was the old uh, wee co uh, coaches, and there was, you know, the, the, the straps in the window to let the windows up and, up and down, and 
these three guys are sitting in the wee coach and as the train pulled out of uh, Glasgow, one of them said to the other two, you both going to Inverness? And he said, yeah, yeah, we're both going to Inverness. And I said, it's a long way. And he said, let's tell each other something about ourselves. So the first one said, yeah, that's a good idea. I said, well, he said, I'm a retired chief constable. He said, I'm very happily married. He said, I've got two fine sons, both doing extremely well for themselves. Uh, one of them's an engineer, and the other one's into this newfangled computing stuff. But he said, they're both doing exceedingly well. So the second one said, well, what a coincidence. He said, that's amazing. He said, I too am a retired chief constable. He's very happily married. He said, I've got two fine daughters. He said, one's a school teacher and the other's a librarian. Both doing exceedingly well for themselves. He said, I'm very proud of both of them. So they looked at the third guy who's sitting in the corner and he's very quiet. And he said, what about you? Well, boys, he says, um, I can't claim your fame at all. He says, I'm only a retired police sergeant for Dingwall. And he said, unlike you two, he says, I never, ever get married. He says, I've got two sons. He says, they're both chief constables. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't ask me why, but I have never, ever forgotten that story uh, <laughs> recited by uh, Bob Allen. So that, that was uh, my first experience. And I, I was really, really taken. Um, we guys reciting uh, Holy Willie's prayer and one thing and another. Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. I thought it was a fantastic night. And, uh, you know, in the next year or two, I, I never, in fact, I haven't missed a year since then. I've been at burn suppers every single year. Uh, some years, one or two other years. I think the worst I had in number was about 14 one year. Um, but uh, I have never missed a year since then, except for COVID. And even at that, we had the uh, burn suppers via Zoom. The next couple of years um, at the police burn supper, they had people like uh, Professor Willie Barclay, uh, they had people like Jimmy Curry, uh, doing the mortal memory and what have you. And these guys really, really impressed me. Uh, I thought they were absolutely fantastic. So much so that um, I went away to the library um, and I get the, the book on Robert Burns by David Deitches, the, the, the solicitor guy. And I read that book cover to cover. Uh, I, I found it absolutely fascinating. And uh, that was me. Uh, hooked and burns, basically, uh, since I was 17. And I said, the sad part about it all is I honestly can't remember any mention of burns while I was at school, either at primary or at secondary school. And it wasn't until I got away from school and get to, my father introduced me to the, the burns supper uh, back then that um, I really... Uh, get involved with it and I have no regrets about that whatsoever. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Absolutely thoroughly enjoyed it. And I still enjoy them. Um although there's some <laughs> sometimes you get speakers that you 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 just like, oh I very good. And others are absolutely fantastic. But that's life. Um no I I, I enjoy my burn suppers every single year. Do you ever participate in the Burn Supper at all? Yeah, um, I, I've done quite a, a number of uh, immortal memories, toasts to the lassies. And in my own club, um, there was one memorable year when uh, what was a hell of a night of snow and what have you. And uh, the lady who was booked to do the, res the reply to the, the lassies failed to appear and we, we were quite concerned that she'd maybe had an accident or something but no she'd forgotten all about it and she went away to Germany <laughs> and we're sitting there and the president at the time Jock Watt um I was secretary of the club still I'm the secretary of the club 
He says, you're the secretary, you organize the speakers. So he said, you better do the response. So I even did the reply to the lasses one year um, at desperately short notice. Um, up in, uh, quite often, um, I, I do uh, the address to the haggis, uh, literally all over the world. Of no late, you know, the latest one was in Fiji. Um, uh, they, they asked if I would do the address to the haggis, but they didn't have a haggis. Uh, so they, they disguised this. It, it was a piece of rump steak or something. And it was disguised, and I was addressing the haggis, and, you know, it was surrounded by heaps and stuff. So nobody really knew what the hell was in the plate. Um, but no, I've, I've done the address to the haggis literally all over the world. Um, you know, you name the country that I've been in and I've probably addressed the haggis there. Um, but apart from that, I, th I think probably, um, you know, you, you were asking in your um, me note that you sent me, uh, the highlights. Well, uh, I think probably one of the highlights, my, my daughter was uh, an officer in the Queen Alexander's Royal Army Nursing Corps. And at one point, uh, she, she's a major in the army and she was the, she was the matron at the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst. And uh, well, through her, I suppose, I received an invitation to do the immortal memory at the down in Sandhurst at the Royal Army Medical Corps um, at their officers' mess in Sandhurst. And that was absolutely unbelievable. It's quite, um, uh, I've done the immortal memory in quite a number of places, but that one was really something else. And uh, the military, they they know how to to uh, make that an occasion, even a greater occasion. And uh, at that one, um, I was told that while I was doing the mortal memory, the piper would be playing throughout. And I thought, for the love of goodness, how are we going to cope with that? But he was away up a corridor, and you could just hear the pipes in the background. And I found it absolutely stimulating. I thought it was fantastic. Um, but the, 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 the ambience of the whole place, the, 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 the officer's mess, uh, and it was lit with uh, the candelabra and all the, the regimental silver was in display. It, it was just absolutely fantastic. And uh, just a few years ago, just before COVID, one of the members of our lodge up in the Black Isle um, he was the regimental sergeant major and two Scots, and he invited me down to Edinburgh to their burnt supper. Well, that, that again was absolutely unbelievable. It was a tremendous night, and uh, as I say, I've been going to burnt suppers since I was 17, and I've never, ever experienced uh, a night that we, we, we had down in Edinburgh with the, Royal, uh, with the two Scots they really go to town. It was a fantastic night, um, really first class. I'll never, ever forget it. It's, and I'm indebted to Jim for taking me to that uh, before he retired from the army. You mentioned your club. Can you give them a wee plug and tell us who they are? Sorry, Jim, I'm, I'm indebted. You mentioned your club. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us what the club is and who they are and what they're up to? I certainly. Um, I'm a member of the Strathbefford Burns Club. Um, we are um, oh, we're, we're, we're uh, an awful friendly we we club um, number seven two three, and uh, I took over as secretary. Pff, must be it must be 24, 25 years ago. Uh, I took over as secretary of the club. And I've been secretary ever ever since, uh, and, and it's a job that nobody else has wanted to go in. But again, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's great fun, great crack. Uh, our president at the moment, Hugh Abrah Mackay. Uh, Hugh again is a, a former uh, police superintendent, 
uh, absolutely steeped in Burns. Uh, he, he is a first class president. Uh, we have our annual uh, Burns Supper celebration. But over the last few years, well, certainly up until COVID hit, I, I was trying to get things moving a wee bit. And uh, we had a modicum of success because we, we, we had wee trips from uh, Strathbeffer down to the Central Belt. And uh, we, we visited uh, Burns Centre at Alloa. We've, uh, we've had uh, invitations to the Irvine Burns Club. We spent time there. Um, we've been all over the, the, the shop. And we had arranged to go down to Dumfries and the, the one and only Bobby Jess um, was going to entertain us down in Dumfries. But of course, uh, COVID came in and that scuppered that. But I am very hopeful that uh, probably in the spring next year, uh, we'll catch up and we'll get down to Dumfries for a couple of days. Um, and get Bobby to, to take us round and give us the spiel. Uh, so it, it's, 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 a, it's a healthy week club. We're doing okay. Um, like many other organisations, you know, the church, like Freemasons, all the rest of it. Um, in one way, the, the, the membership is getting a bit older and we've lost quite a number of members over the last two or three years. But uh, I'm quite uh, encouraged because we've got uh, we've had two or three young guys uh, coming along, primarily with their fathers, and uh, you know you, you you sort of think are they going to take to this or are they going to no take to it? But uh, they've thoroughly enjoyed it, and uh, they're now full fledged members of Strathbeffer Burns Club. We had a wee upset. Uh, yeah, well, four years ago now, uh, we've been meeting in the Strath Peffer Hotel uh, for almost 70 years, just after the war, once the, the, the club got up and running again. And the hotel was sold to the Chinese and uh, they evicted us. They no longer wanted us in the hotel. Uh, it wasn't in their agenda. So we have moved after 70 years in the one location uh, up to the, the Ben Wivis Hotel in uh, Strathbeffer. And they've made us very, very welcome. And uh, we've had three great nights up there now. Uh, we should have had five nights up there, but of course, COVID uh, prevented that from happening. So that's where we are with the club. Um, it's been in the go in its present form since just after the Second World War. Uh, previously to that, it was known as the Caber Fay Club. And then it, it died a, a death during the, the, the wars. Um, I, I always find it interesting looking back at some of the, the, the burn suppers that the club held just after the war and the number of toasts that they had, uh, probably double the number of toasts that we have. And there was toasts to agriculture, toasts to Her Majesty's services, uh, toasts to uh, the village cat, you name it. Uh, and the club had, had all of those toasts and responses. So <laughs> the good Lord himself knows when they get home after that lot. Um, but we, we've, we've trimmed it down a wee bit now, and uh, it's still into the small hours before we get home. Right. Just in terms of Burns' works, have you got a favourite? Yeah, um, I've got quite a few I mean, you've got things like Thomas Shanter, Holy Willie's Prayer, all these kind of bits and pieces. Um, and and I, I love them all, and uh, we've got some... Uh, members, uh, in fact, Jimmy Fraser that I mentioned, the, the ex-RSM, uh, his rendition um, is of Thomas Shanter is just unbelievable. He's fantastic. He's first class. Um, and I've just seen so many uh, 
variations in the theme, but the, these poems, like everybody else, I love them. Um, there, are, there, there are a few others that I, I thoroughly enjoy. Um, I, I, I think the Cotter Saturday Night has got to be probably one of my uh, favourites. I mean, it, it's just so descriptive. Um, you know, every time I, I read it or hear it or look at it, you know, with with joy unfeigned brothers and sisters meet, and each for others' welfare kindly spear. The social hours, swift-winged, unnoticed fleet, each tells the uncles that he sees and hears. You know, that, it's just so, so descriptive. You, you, can, you can just feel as if you're sitting there uh, with them in the room and, you know, you, you, they're coming back after being away, working all week, um, and they're sitting around the angle there telling everybody what they've done and who they've met and what they've been up to. You know, it, it's just so, so descriptive. I love it. And then, you, you know, you... you you get through the bit where Jenny and her boyfriend arrive and one thing and another. And then I think a very poignant uh, point in it, you know, when it, the, the cheerful supper done, with serious face, they run the ingle form a circle wide. The sire turns o'er with patriarchal grace, his big hall Bible, once his father's pride, and his bonnet reverently is laid aside now how how descriptive is that uh, you know you again you can just feel that you're sitting there um in that room with a family um the, the, they've gone through the social bit that they've they've been telling each other what they've been up to they've had their, their basic supper a porridge um and then we get to the kind of serious bit and you know, I, I i just find it it's a fantastic. Um, likewise, and I'm no very well acquainted with the thing, but I, I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, it's Toa Dugs. Uh, and, and again, you know, I, I just think it's a, a fantastic piece of work. Um, how Caesar and Lewis work against each other. And, you know, I, again, when you get guys that know what they're doing, I could sit and listen to that uh, all night long. So th those are probably uh, my, my favourite. I mean, other things, you know, the likes of the, the address to toothache. <laughs> you, can, you can feel the pain. You know, you can just sit and listen to that and you, you can actually feel the pain in your, in your tooth. Uh, I mean, Burns, who, who else could write a, a, a poem about toothache um, and do it in the way that Robert Burns did? It's absolutely fantastic. Um, there's other bits and pieces, you know, obviously, uh, uh, where I am at the moment, um, the, the Masonic song uh, is, is something that's very dear to me, uh, especially the, 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 the verse where it's, um, uh, within this dear mansion may wayward contention or withered envy ne'er enter, may secrecy round the mystical bound and brotherly love be the centre. And that again, you know, you, you can you can get from that just how much Robert Burns got out of his Freemasonry, um, and you know the the as you're aware, he was a member of the Lodge in Turbouton, and uh, there's a wee bit in in his poem to the to the, the brethren in uh, the Lodge, and I, I if I'm comparing a Burns supper. Very often, uh, I'll use uh, two lines for that poem just to introduce the, the evening. You know, oft have I met your social band and spent the cheerful, festive night. Uh, and, and I think it's a great way to, to introduce folk to a burnt supper um, and then get into the, the, the meat of the evening. So th those are um, some of the, the, the special Burns poems, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I love them. I'm glad you mentioned the toy dogs because that gives you a link to Newfoundland at least when you go. Uh, but uh, up at far abroad, the sailors going to fish for coal. That's what he was talking about. So let's get yeah. in there. But you mentioned Jimmy Curry earlier on, the late yeah. Jimmy Curry, 
Uh, Jimmy was the, the, the minister at, at Dunlop, aye. And Dunlop, when I was a young cop and student uh, during my probation uh, in the post. And uh, I, I was fortunate enough to get quite friendly with Jimmy, and he was wonderful. And I was just thinking as you were talking about that, and you've been to so many burn suppers since you were 17 year old, you must have met an awful lot of characters in the Burns movement. Um, <laughs> yeah. Any of them stand in your mind and give a couple of stories? <laughs> I could I could <laughs> incriminate myself here. Um, I mean, the, 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 there's a lot of these people that I've already mentioned that I, I thought were absolute characters. They were fantastic. Um, and over the years at the Burns Suppers, we, we've, you know, I've been very, very fortunate in meeting. Well, lately, I, I've just mentioned uh, Regimental Sergeant Major Jimmy Fraser. Um, tremendous. Uh, Tremendous at reciting the likes of uh, Tamashant or uh, Holy Willie's Prayer, that type of thing. Absolutely first class. He does it. And, and he's just a right wee character. Um, you know, you, you, you couldn't beat him with a stick. <laughs> he's quite something else. Um, up north, uh, we, we've had quite a, a range of, of speakers over the years. Um, because we're, we're away up in the Highlands in Strathbeffer, uh, at that time of the year in January, it's very difficult at times to bring folk from the south up north. And we try, albeit I've got to say that after 25 years as secretary, I'm really struggling. At in fact, boys, I've got all my speakers for January with the exception of the, the mortal memory. So if either of you are not doing anything, uh, you'd be more than welcome to <laughs> come up with um, I've got everything else filled up, but I'm, I'm still struggling with this one. Uh, well, we'll throw, we'll throw that offer out to the, the rest of the audience and see if, yeah, if absolutely. anyone responds to you. <laughs> uh, I, I, I was with Archie Chalmers last weekend and I meant to, I meant to wind uh, Archie up, but... Uh, there was other things in my mind, so I forgot all about it. Um, but up north, um, we, we've had uh, we've got a, a member of the club, Ian McNabb. Ian's now in his nineties, and he has he's done every every toast and virtually every response uh, in the Burns Club over the years. Uh, Ian, at one point, was Director of Education in Rossshire, and uh, he is, he's very, very serious, but he's, his immortal memories are outstanding, uh, they really are, uh, probably devoid of humour, uh, if, if I were perfectly honest with you, but he, he is, you know, so, so good. And uh, again, I could listen to him all night. Um, and the other side of the coin, we've got a, a guy up here, uh, McAllister, Bill McAllister, a journalist. And uh, he is an out and out character, uh, Bill McAllister. And, uh, you know, he, he is the exact opposite. Uh, it's, it's all humour and no much else with Bill. But uh, it, it's great to get that balance into the club. We were fortunate. I, I've, I've had um, uh, the the very Reverend James Simpson, who's a former moderator of the Church of Scotland. Uh, we've had him as uh, a speaker at Strathbeffer. Um, but a more recent moderator, uh, the Reverend Susan Brown. Uh, Susan, of course, was in the church at Calernon in the Black Isle. And then she moved from there to Dornoch Cathedral uh, and effectively took over from Jimmy Simpson at Dornoch Cathedral. And uh, we've had Susan uh, on a number of occasions. And I, I had the temerity, um, I don't think it was the Burns Supper in Strath. I think it was at the Dingwall Gallic Choir Burns Supper, which I, I tend to compare every, every year. And uh, she was there to do the, the reply to the lassies. And this was just no long after she arrived up in the north. And at that time, the, the Spice Girls were at their very height. 
and I did the big build up for Susan and uh, introduced her as Holy Spice. Well, <laughs> she saw the funny side of it, um, but my heavens, did I pay for that over the years. Um, every opportunity that she, she got, she had a wee go at me. Uh, <laughs> she, she's an absolute star. Uh, and she, she's, she's been fantastic. Uh, she's helped me out a few times uh, with burn suppers. And her and her husband, who's also a minister, uh, they very often do a double act uh, with a toast to the lasses and the reply to the lasses. Um, how they got on at night when they get home after that, I don't know, but there you go. Uh, the, the two of them are a, a tremendous double act. So, yeah, we, we've had heaps and heaps of characters over the year uh, up in the north. Um, and the only thing I would say now is that it's, it's getting more and more difficult to find somebody in the North that we haven't had before um, and who is willing to uh, do it. I mean, Inverness Burns Club tend to have their, their burn supper on the same night as we do. Uh, and that's natural, you know, we have it on the Friday closest to, to the 25th of January. And occasionally we've managed to, we've been people at Cliff Sim. Uh, past president in uh, the Inverness Club and Cliff, another character, uh, is absolutely first class and well worth listening to. He really is. So, yeah, I've met so many people over the years. Um, I, even when I've been down, you know, likes of Ian Dool down in uh, Irvine and our fantastic guys, um, Archie Chalmers. Um, you know, they're, they're all tremendous. I, I, I learn so much from them. Um, and it's always, you know, you, you, you never speak to them, but you find out something else that you didn't know. <laughs> Every day is a school day when you're with these guys. Um, well, just to interrupt you, the, the, you're talking about Archie Chalmers. Uh, Archie was my apprentice in the Comarna uh, tour. And he's now taken over completely, and he's doing a better job than I ever did. I've got to say. <laughs> but, but the bottom line to it is, I was at Charlie. What, what, I don't know, I don't know when it was. But two years ago, I think we started talking about him, Douglas. Yeah. And I, I tried to persuade him to come on to this, and he'll know you've got a position of power in this world uh, over that man. <laughs> Any chance you could maybe get over a wee prod? Absolutely. I'll, I'll be, be delighted to have a go at him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the comment I was going to make, that having given us all that list of names, I'm sure yeah. there's a few in there that we could persuade to join us in a podcast. Yeah. Archie's avoiding me with the play. <laughs> as, as long as you take Archie's photo, he's quite happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Yeah. Well, I, th I, think we're, I, th I think we're really running out of time now. Uh, and um, I think there's probably a few questions that we've missed. I mean, one of the ones that, uh, that I, I missed when we were talking to you about your kind of personal life was whether you had any interest in sport. Um, our ex extensive team of researchers <laughs> always manages to come up with a photograph. And the one I noticed um, was from Facebook, which looked as though you're getting presented with a, a ball or presenting a ball to the Staggies, Ross County. Yeah. Uh, as uh, are you been a sportsman in your past? Yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed all sorts of sports, but I, I, I played football a, a lot in, in my younger day. Um, and as I say, when I was in the staff at the Scottish Police College, uh, we did a hell of a lot of running. And I, I, I've got to say that I didn't enjoy running, but you, you had to lead from the front, and uh, we did a lot of running at the, the college. Swimming, um, I was a uh, qualified instructor and examiner with the Royal Life Saving Society. I thoroughly enjoyed that uh, aspect of, of things. Um, in my younger days in the police, when I was stationed in the Black Isle, uh, we had an annual charity match, uh, the, the men in the village versus the women at hockey. And my heavens, that, that, was, that was something else. Uh, these, these girls took no prisoners. They, they, <laughs> uh, they say shinties, uh, hockey without rules. Well, 
that lasses could do the business with whether they had or had any rules. Um, <laughs> That there was no holding back as far as they were concerned. I don't think we ever beat them. I think they beat us hands down every time. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm a, an avid uh, Ross County supporter. Uh, I've supported them for years and years and years. And uh, yeah, when I had my own business running, uh, at least twice a year I would sponsor uh, the match, the ball, or sponsor something and uh, take a heap of guys, usually ex-cops, uh, along to the hospitality. And uh, that was great fun, great. Um, no, I, I, I'm over the moon with Staggy's performance last year. We ended up in the top six, which was something that we didn't expect, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, we've had a poor start to the season, but uh, we, we had... Uh, Boys from Ayrshire, Kilmarnock boys up, and we beat them last week and got our first three points, so delighted with that. And, uh, Don't say that too loud or Jim will not talk to you. <laughs> well, we've got to get a point somewhere. Um, <laughs> the, the fact of the matter is we should have got three points against Harps, but we just didn't get the rub of the ball that day. But there you go. You win some, you lose some. In fact, some weeks I know scoring draw would be terribly handy. <laughs> Uh, but it, it, it's, it's a, a, you know, the, 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 the Scottish League is very, very, I mean, you've got your Rangers and your Celtics and all of you, but take the two of them out of the equation and there's not a lot uh, between the rest of the teams. Yeah. Um, somebody was saying after we got beat the Celtic there, and I mean, we held them in the first half and we were doing all right, but basically... Celtic have got a weekly budget that's probably equivalent to our annual budget. Um, so, you know, the, the, the odds are stacked against us before we even go off the... the yeah. Well, what, what I liked was your comment about, um, you know, take, taking a table at the hospitality and getting some of your, your police friends along. And that's one of the things I noticed. I mean, I'm a, a United supporter, is that uh, at, 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 with the, the smaller teams... There's still a lot of camaraderie, and uh, oh, yeah. and you know the the concept of the Ruthy Crony it still exists when yeah. uh, you get your pals along and have a blather, blather mm -hmm. over lunch or something like that before watching a match. It's great. Oh, absolutely, and of course Ross County is very much a community club, and McGregor has put so much into it, and uh, he's held the thing together for for so many years now. But no, it's very much a community club, and. Uh, as you say, the, the the you know it's just so good to get along there, uh, get the crack and, and enjoy a meal and enjoy a few drams. Uh, yeah. It's absolutely super. Mm. Anyway, we drifted into talking about football there, um, uh, but I think we've run out of time. So, it just leaves me to say a huge thank you to you, Ramsey, for coming along and telling us about your life with Robert Burns. Thanks very much. Thank Thank you very much for having me. I just hope that I've met your expectations. No, that was great. <laughs>